Hello, everybody, and welcome to Perspectives. Good you could be with us, because today is going to be a little bit different. Ah, it's sort of in keeping with the spirit of, of the holiday, but at the same time, boy, we launched a whole new industry in this part of the world. Our guest on this first segment, John Woolley, Brian Crane, welcome to you both. Thank you, Thanks, Sam. Sam. Great to be back. Now, John, with you, ordinarily, we have you in because you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. This time, it's not a book you've written. Nope. I was a writer and co-producer of a documentary with Brian, who, who directed and co-produced, called Tulsa Terrors, about the horror movies that were made in Tulsa starting in the mid-1980s that really started a whole trend nationwide, really worldwide. And people, a lot of people made a lot of money. They did. Brian, what did you discover that you didn't know when you got into this? Everything, really. I mean, I didn't. I had heard about Blood Cult and some of the first movies, but I didn't know until I got into it. And now I know everything about it because spent all summer editing and stuff. And it's a really cool part of Tulsa history. You know, it's uh, that nobody really knows about. I mean, people do, but not yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, the trailer that we're going to run, and the folks at home will get an idea of what the show that you guys produced and wrote and put together is all about. If we could, let Brian, let's roll that. Uh, a trailer. If you're gonna do a horror film, this is the formula. You gotta have a killing every 15 minutes, you know, you gotta have a chase, and you might have the occasional little nudity scene, but that that is your formula. A good horror movie, like a lot of good movies, especially horror movies, Oh my God, get the hell out of there. <laughs> Don't open the door. Faith is here. That was the beginning of a time when uh, everybody was starting to get interested in making these little movies. Our movie was not realistically gruesome. <laughs> Blood Cult was shot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And why Tulsa? Well, we were all living in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the time. We were politely asked to get the hell off the campus. Blood Cult made the industry sit up and take notice and changed the industry and started, really, direct-to-home video movies. Everybody has an idea how to make a movie. Everybody. I don't care it's a guy at the quick trip. He's got an idea about telling a story about working at the quick trip. I saw something horrible. There, there it is. <laughs> have eternity, Gracie Moore. Come join us, Gracie Moore. <laughs> Since I only spent $75 on the entire movie, I made a profit pretty quick. I don't recall how we connected with Tom Savini. He jump-started that film for us. Wow. <laughs> I should think that would be obvious. We wanted to do some of the scenes ourselves, so one night, way out in the middle of Spapa, in a barn by ourselves, the killer is killing me, and my hands are tied. <laughs> so Dana's running sound, plus she's trying to be the killer. <laughs> I'm reaching out with my toe, trying to hit the camera so we can get the record button on. It was kind of a fun kind of time. It was a, an adventure. Lord, have mercy on us all. They're here, and they're coming for us. Lots of faces <laughs> and lots of ideas from yesterday. Mm -hmm. Why hadn't someone done this before? I don't know, I've written about it before. I wrote about it when I was with the Tulsa World. As a matter of fact, I was on the set of most of these movies, and as Brian will tell you, because he put it in the, put it in the documentary, I even did some cameos in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about it for the world. I wrote about it in my book, uh, uh, Shot in Oklahoma. I've written about it over the years, but this is the first time I've really been, been able to get it together to where it tells the whole story of how important Tulsa United Entertainment, which is now VCI Entertainment, and Christopher and Linda Lewis and the Blair family were in getting 
direct to home video movies established as a viable thing for distributors to do. It was an amazing thing, something you said earlier that it, what started in Tulsa swept the country. Yes. Did you learn anything from that? Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, like he said, it's like after Blood Cult, you know, everybody did it and then they started having to up their game a lot. They had to get bigger actors and actresses in, you know, because that was, you know, to up the game and sell more videos, you know, and it was, uh, who's in the second one? Uh, Tom Savini. Tom and Savini, then, mm -hmm. And then... Um, John Carradine. John Carradine and, and, and Patrick, Patrick Wayne. Patrick Wayne. In the John one. Wayne's son. And then after that, though, it was like, I wouldn't say it. The other movies, they didn't really rely on big actors. It was just more independent. They kind of, you know, caught the wave and were making movies. Sure. We cover about 20 years, roughly. Mm -hmm. 13 Mitchell. pictures. Yeah. 13 altogether? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it? Well, that's for our time, for our purposes. That's yeah. it, Sam. That's kind of was in the wake of the Lewises with the with the Blood Cult, The Ripper, and Revenge, which were the first three they did for United Entertainment that really started that whole trend. Brian, folks don't get to see you in your role. I mean, this is a first, having you on camera, a, as far yeah. as I know. There you go. Well, <clears throat> yeah. So get the small children away from the theater. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> as you looked at the efforts of the early videos, did you get any ideas? As in, like, to make a movie or something? Yeah. No, I mean, that's not really what I, you know, documentaries is a, apples and oranges, but it was interesting to see how the the difference in quality and stuff. Like, some of them were a little less than others, depending on what they had, if they had a budget or not. You could definitely tell. You think almost all of them don't have mm -hmm. budgets, but they did the Lewis, they did in the beginning and at the end. And there were some in the middle that did, too, don't get me wrong. But, uh, like, the Mummy movie, he said he only had, what, $75 or something for the entire <laughs> thing. Yeah. So yeah. he made a profit pretty quick. And he did a great job, too. I mean, it was... So, it, no, it put all that $75 up on the screen. Yeah, but... right, yeah, exactly. Well, it's not, a, it's not a no man's land any longer. Is there still an avenue to make money at it? God, everything's streaming now. That's the equivalent. I mean, now yeah. if you do it, you know, be like direct-to-video back then is like direct-to-streaming now, like going directly to Netflix and stuff, which companies do all the time now. So it's kind of that same model, wouldn't you think? Yes, I'd say it's the yeah. same. Yeah, absolutely. The only movies I've seen, are, or even been close to, my wife and I were downtown one night. Sylvester Stallone was shooting a film here, mm -hmm. what, a couple of months ago? Tulsa, what is that, the, the TV the, series, what was that? Tulsa King? T King, yeah. Y yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it, it flashed, it was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was just like, television has become this hungry animal that has to be fed constantly, yeah. and it's not just TV. Yeah. There's so many ports of exit to get a product out. Yeah. Once it's done, it's gone. You better have a follow-up before you even put the first one out. Anything in the cans out there going on you know about? No, not really. Uh, the things have changed, they've changed so much and so quickly. You know, yeah. as you say, with the streaming platforms and with all of the different ways of doing things. So, you know, my book, Old Fears, has been optioned for four years now by Sony Pictures. And, you know, I'm hoping that that happens, but mm -hmm. you, I never know. You just don't know. It, it's just, it's a very fluid market. And, of course, the, the strike has really changed, the writer's strike really changed things around and the SAG strike. Brian, we got about a minute and a half. I got to ask you, how do you like being on this side of the camera? Oh, it's fine. I, I was here like five years ago for Oil Capital Underground, but that's been a little bit. And we did a few this week, so it's different. I like being behind the camera better, but hey, you know, <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Thanks to both of you. Thank you, Sam. It's always Appreciate great it. to visit with hey, you. It's great, great to have you here. Oh. And it airs here on uh, RSU TV on the 31st. Mm -hmm. Right. And a shout out to Daniel Murphy, who works here, who's back over there somewhere. He helped me on this on the production side all through it. So just there. I didn't forget. Is he okay? Uh, yeah, he's <laughs> probably red, beat red right now, but yeah. He's okay. Hey, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. We're so. going to take a short break. We'll be back with more, and this time, no ghouls, right after this. <laughs>